Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today. I learned Rails series. Today we're going to be looking at doing secrets via Rails credentials. And we'll go ahead and just dive right in. So what are secrets and what are custom credentials here? So if you're on edgeguide.rubyonrails.org, and there's a section under here kind of custom credentials, and it is a way to provide encrypted values for environment variables so that way you can commit them safely. And then as long as you don't commit your master key, uh, which doesn't need to be long in um, source control, you can go ahead and have a nice way to put in credentials for some application. So let's say your application has a staging area, a development area, and a production area. And you want to have your AWS credentials within there. Uh, you don't have to share those amongst all of the team, you can have one person uh, supply them originally to the application within the credentials, and then uh, they'll be able to be used throughout. So I'm not going to read through this entire section, but it does talk about how you can go ahead and use so a secret key base belongs in credentials. And edit the file, we run this bin rails credentials edit. And to show you this command will create master key if no keys defined. They're accessible via Rails application credentials. And so here's some examples it provides. Uh, and then you can also do it per environment as well, like I said. So let's kind of dive in real quick. And we'll just run some of the commands that are provided. And you can see uh, what I mean. So let me make this one a little bit bigger. And go ahead and run Rails credentials help first. And this is going to just spew out a long uh, thing here for you to read a little bit more uh, than is provided in the documents. So I recommend reading through that entire thing. You can do a Rails credentials edit, and that'll use your default editor, or you can provide an editor with it. So if you want to use Vim or this or that, you can go ahead and run that. And it'll take a second here to load. So I already have an AWS access key in here and secret access key. I'll be deleting these because they are posted on the internet now. Um, but that's just an example. So, you know, for example, let's go ahead and if you haven't already, create an AWS account, sign in, go over to IAM, so Identity and Access Management. You could just search for it up here and it'll be the first one. Go over to Users and then say Add User. I'll just walk you through this whole thing. Blah, say programmatic access, and it says enable access key ID and secret access key. Next, we're going to give some permissions. You can go ahead and create groups if you want, uh, if you have an existing user, or you can attack, attach a direct policy. Uh, for this user, we're going to give them full access to Amazon S3, optional tags for that user, and then here is going to say what is the username what they are bound with, and their permissions so you to review them. And then you say create. Then here's your access key that's provided. So you would just type that in here. Um, or, you know, whatever editor, editor you are using. So I could just provide that here. And then the secret access key, which is hidden here. I'll go ahead and click show, copy it, paste it in, write it out. And then it is the file that says encrypted and saved. So we'll be using an IAM user later for using S3 for storage to upload things like the sitemap, for example. So that way it's not on Heroku, as we had mentioned in the previous episode. So we can put all sorts of things in there. And then, they, like I said, they're accessible via these Rails application credentials commands. So if I wanted to go into... And we'll do Rails C. We'll just copy some of these commands here. And you can see it spits out the credentials as well as the secret key base. And there it is. So um, the other thing we want to do while you're in S3 is just go ahead to go to uh, AWS to go to S3 and just create a new bucket 
you can call it whatever you want. Uh, I think I created one called Program Tail Test. And just give it the defaults for now. We'll be revisiting that when we get to it in a later episode. Um, as I mentioned, you can do this per environment. So you can do Rails Credentials Edit and then say Environment Production if you want. And that'll create a production key. Um, oops, I'm going to say no editor. So I got to say editor equals, I'm going to do nano again. And I can go ahead and set credentials specifically for this production one. And then see it's created a production key. So I'm not going to keep that around. And next up, what I can do is you can take the cat out of those. So if I wanted to do the cat out of the master key, for example, I can set it on Heroku by running Heroku config set and then Rails master key and then the name of the master key. Um, I believe it's smart in these configs. So you could also call it Rails production key and give it the production key and Rails staging key, etc. So if you do have different uh, credentials set, they will have access to those credentials via the key and you don't actually have to display it out anywhere. So super short episode, this is just a quick guide to get started on credentials. We will be using them in later episodes. And really, that's it. Uh, I also posted this uh, blog article that I uh, from Ramil Mehta. Uh, I thought it was a, a good little starter guide that kind of walks through a lot of it as well. And uh, yeah, that's it. There's nothing really heavy to it. Go ahead and encrypt your keys. I'll be deleting mine. If you like content like this, go ahead and support me on Patreon. Buy me a coffee. I really appreciate it. Uh, like and subscribe. Thank you, and I hope you guys have a great day.